Well, it looks like every journalist that comes across any person in the hierarchy of Arsenal's leadership has a question to ask him, and that question is none other than Mukalo Modric, because Arsenal have really shown huge interest in the player. The player has too gone ahead to reciprocate the love of joining Arsenal, and that's why he's the talk of town right about now. So today we are here to bring you a story of Arsenal CEO Vinay hints on signing Mukalo Modric. Then Odegaard has gone ahead to really win one of the biggest accolades of his life in the Premier League because he has never won it. And I think he has never been nominated before. And I think his first time to get nominated, he has gone ahead to sweep it. And obviously, you expected him to sweep it because when he did, all had a very wonderful two games in December. And then lastly, we are going to talk about Memphis Depay on the brink of joining Atletico Madrid. Smash the like button, comment and share. If you're totally watching us for the very first time, lower right bottom corner, that's the place to be. So guys, we are left with just... We are left with just how many? Is it 100 subscribers to hit 100 subscribers to hit? Mm, it's 100 subscribers to hit 10,000 subscribers on this channel. So please continue to subscribe to this channel. And if I told you are new and you don't know how to subscribe, lower right bottom corner there is a black button that has what subscribe. Smash it after smashing it, hit the notification bell. That will enable you get notified every time I upload a video onto this channel. Now let's get into these stories as they come in through now yesterday you know to it that arsenal was launching the new artwork of the emirates stadium you all know that and it was really a very good event there came in the likes of uh, ian wright i saw Mikel Ateta, then vinay was also there edu was there odegaard was in attendance and very many other arsenal players obviously it's looking great and i think after playing uh after playing spurs i think their next game are they play hosting Everton? They're hosting Everton at the Emirates. I think that will be all out there and the stadium will be having a new look all together. So that is it for the Arsenal launch of the new look of the Emirates. But all that had to happen. And guess what? The CEO of, of Arsenal, known as Vinay, was in attendance. And guess what? Several questions were asked to him, and let's go straight into those questions that we are asked to the CEO of Arsenal. Now, Vinay said, if something makes sense from a technical perspective and a financial perspective, of course, we will look at it, but we are happy with the squad that we've got. We will, of course, have a look at what's around in every transfer window. So he was hitting about the transfer window of Arsenal that what is Arsenal focusing at? What is the plan of Arsenal? Obviously, he hinted about the technical perspective that leads everything because the financial perspective comes in later because the first perspective is all about the technical perspective. Go to Ukraine, scout a player known as Mokalo Modric, appreciate him and ask the manager, can he fit into our team? If the manager says yes, all right, we really agree on that. Then later, we go to the financial perspective that has really seen very many players not joining Arsenal because of the amount of money being asked by the clubs they are playing for. Yudi Tidimans is one of those. £65 million was wanted by Leicester in the summer of 2021. Arsenal had 45. They really left him alone. Then they went for him in the next summer. They wanted £45 million. Arsenal was willing to offer 25. So the financial perspective let Arsenal leave the deal of Tillemans. Now, after that, Mukalo Modric, the current player we are really talking on right about now, is really wanted by Arsenal. But he passed the technical perspective, but the financial perspective is really taking this deal to delay. This is what Vina is talking about, that the financial perspective, of course, will look at it. So, Two things have to match in order to sign in players. That's why you see to it that for Jesus to come in through at Arsenal, it was easy for them to make a decision because they had £67 million they had submitted as a bid to Fiorentina to sign Valhovic and it was turned down. And this time round, they were getting a Premier League proven player at less than £30 million because Jesus was paid all bought at 45 45 million pounds, meaning that Arsenal saved close to 30 
close to 30 million pounds not so so it shows you that the financial aspect was really looked at and they passed it so he went ahead to say that well of course we have to look at what's around in every transfer and looking at what's around in every transfer that's why they've made Mukalo Modric, their number one target or their number one sign. To an extent that they even laid a deal of a player called Yao Felix pass through their hands as they waited to bring in a player known as Mukalo Modric. Then he said, Oh, there is something I'm missing out. There is something I'm missing out on. There is something I missed out on. <coughs> This is where he started everything on. He started on the transfers. I missed out on it. This is where I'm supposed to start from. He said, we've got a very clear plan headed up by Edu about what we want to do to strengthen the squad. Every transfer window, of course, we are going to look to see what opportunities are out. Now, looking at the available opportunities for Arsenal, started way back in the summer on Mokalo Modric. They scouted him. They approached Shakhtar. Shakhtar told them, we want 50 million euros. And Arsenal said, all right, let's go back and rethink. Everton went in through. They put in 30 million euros as a bid. They said, no, we want 50 million euros. Now, Arsenal having a clear plan on Modric, they decided that in the general transfer window, we are going all in for Modric at, sorry to sign him from, from Shakhtar and I think they thought that maybe he wouldn't he wouldn't exceed 50 million euros because it's very hard to see to it that a player's price in the summer is multiplied by two after six months that's really weird you can't tell me that that is elsewhere unless otherwise it's in the contract of the player as a buyout clause but for Mukalo Modric he doesn't have a buy a buyout clause in his contract it's just the board really trying to put out a price that is really pricing the lad out of the move but the CEO of Arsenal is telling us that they've got a clear plan and Edu is at the helm of that plan and I think they are going to get this done and dusted now this is where everyone would like to go on and really put his uh, put his ears loud and clear and clean them very very well this is Vinay now he also went and said we've got We've got, we've got a long-term plan to continue to strengthen the team, meaning that the long-term plan of strengthening the team, meaning signing in players in the perfect age that fits the profile of Mikel Ateta, 19, 20, to 25, 26, 25, 26 years of age. Those are the players that he really wants to sign at Arsenal. And lastly, they asked him about Modric. He said, you know the answer. I'm going to give you. You know the answer I'm going to give you. I'm not going to talk about specific players. So, you know, even Mikel Ateta, when asked about Mukalo Modric, he always tells us that I cannot talk about a player who doesn't belong to Arsenal. But bids have been really put in and rejected by Shakhtar Donetsk. So, a hint was almost given to us in those three statements that Vinay, the CEO of Arsenal, really put out as far as Modric to Arsenal is concerned. But it shows you that Everything they are saying is really hinting on Modric. He he really he's really into the final perspective of Arsenal, and I think they are trying to get him. But let's wait and see how everything is going to go on and really happen in here onto the Rokani Media Football. So that's what the CEO said about signing Modric. But obviously, more and more is really coming in through from the team that really gets us the news as far as Modric is concerned. Today, I've seen Jacob's Ben on the football terrace, and I believe that he has been talking about Mokalo Modric, and I think our next story is going to be about him really addressing and making that point clear of Mokalo Modric. Now, at the start of January, the Premier League released a list of players that are really eligible to win the Premier League Player of the Month Award of... December. One of those was Odegaard. The other solo player that was nominated was Bokayo Saka. There was Haaland. There was Rashford. There was Casemiro. Ward Prowse. And I think someone else. There was also another player. So there are close to eight players nominated, but Odegaard has gone ahead to really be named the Premier League player for the month of December and 
we've been told by the Premier League that Martin Odegaard, the Arsenal captain, has been voted for the Premier League player of the month of November and December. And if at all he really takes that, I think he deserves it because in November, Arsenal played against Arsenal played against Wolves as their last game. He scored a brace. Let me be exact. Arsenal in November. How many Premier League games did you play? I think they even beat Chelsea. I think they played Chelsea. Was it on the first? If I'm not mistaken. November. Alright, first November. They played against Chelsea. He didn't have any attribute into their face. So they played two games in November. They played against Chelsea and they played against they played against Wolverhampton Wanderers in November. So he scored a brace. A brace in the game of Wolverhampton Wanderers. So in December, the first game that Arsenal played was against West Ham. He had two assists. Then the game they played against a team called, called Brighton. He scored one goal and assisted. <laughs> Meaning that in the three games, in the four games that Arsenal played in November and December, Odegaard had three goals and created three assists. So I think no player really matched him. I think no player really matched him and he deserved it. And with the talent he's having, I'm really happy for him. So congratulations to Martin Odegaard for winning the Premier League Player of the Month Award of November and December in in the year of 2022, but it's going to be given to him in 2020. It's going to be given to him in 2023, and I believe he's really going to go ahead and be the, take it very, very well. So congratulations to Martin Odegaard. You are really a very special player, and you worked for it because there is nothing you really get without hard work. So he worked hard for it. And I believe he deserves it. And he's, I think it's the first biggest honor in football that this man has really gone ahead to get because he has been winning. He has been winning the player of the month. Sorry, the man of the match awards for Arsenal very, very many times, especially in November. Against Wolverhampton Warriors won it. Against West Ham won it in December. Against Brighton, I think he also won it. So it shows you how good this guy is. That is Martin Odegaard. And he has continuously not let his club down. Every time they've really wanted him, he has really surfaced to really help the club prosper in all means that, in all ways that it matters for the club of Arsenal. So congratulations to Odegaard. However much, I don't support Arsenal. I love the player. I love the player. I wish he was playing for our team. That's it. But he is really at Arsenal. So guys, thank you very much for watching in through. From there... Let's talk about a player known as Memphis Depay. Linked to Arsenal on very many times, United, Chelsea, and very many others. He is fed up of the favoritism that is at Barcelona, according to him, because he thinks that he is better than some of the players that are being fielded ahead of him at Barcelona. And obviously has fallen out with, Jao, with Xavi, and Xavi has really decided that he needs to go because the player wants also to go. Now, breaking story, coming in from... David Gimedina and Diego Pico, all of these work for the Maka in Madrid Atletico. And you know where Maka comes in from. It's Madrid and they're always having what we call concrete and first-hand information as far as this is concerned. Fabrizio Romano breaking the story yesterday that he is really close on negotiating a deal. Atletico Madrid are really negotiating a deal to sign Memphis Depay. And here we are. We've been told that Memphis Depay is one step away from becoming an Atletico de Madrid player. Negotiations are advanced and it could be closed in the next few days. And why are they really wanting Memphis Depay? Because they've lost two strikers. That is Cunha, who is at Wolves, and Yao Felix, meaning that they need to get in a striker that can really help them out. And them not being in the Champions League, they are not bothered because they believe that they can work out with that squad in the UEFA Europa League. With the likes of Antonio Griezmann, uh, is it Rodrigo Dipo also plays that side? So it shows you how good Simeone wants his team to be. But I think Memphis Depay, will he benefit from the style of play of Diego Simeone? I think for him, he's, an, he's a hardworking player that doesn't even get bothered of really playing pragmatically, provided he's given a chance to read the line and really score goals. That's his main mission because he wants to go out and really prove to Barcelona that 
I can really go ahead and really score goals for you. I would have scored goals for you, but you let me go and I'm Atletico Madrid really scoring those goals. So guys, thank you very much for watching him through. Tell me your reactions to Arsenal CEO hinting on signing Mokalo Modric. What do you think about Martin Odegaard winning the Premier League award of the month of November and December? Then lastly, Memphis Depay, he is going to join Atletico Madrid. Your reactions are welcome in the comment section below. Rock and David remains my name. Thank you for really watching in. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. We are left with 100. Let me check. Let me be exact. Let me be exact. We are left with just 100 subscribers. I think 100 something. We are left with 100. 140 subscribers to hit 10,000 subscribers on this channel. So guys, continue to subscribe and don't forget to really hit the notification bell after subscribing that will enable you get notified every time I upload a video onto this channel, guys. I sign out for now. See you later. And I think I hand you over to the hands in the hands of the Amount of God to protect you abundantly. I sign out for now. Bye-bye.